what I'm start doing now is using the scratch brush with a very uh, low size uh, and strength. All I'm just doing, just adding strokes randomly. And you'll see this area here, for example, it doesn't have enough stroke definition. You'll see that that means that it doesn't have enough geometry in it. And I turned off my axes so I will have different look on each side of the skin of the of the mesh. And I'm just going doing random brushes. I'm not really worried how they look right now because I have them on a different layer. And I can either get rid of that layer if I want to. Or reduce the effect just to add a little bit of skin tone to it. Now we have our model pretty much done. All I need to do is to add finer detail to the skin. For that I'm going to divide my mesh one more time. As you can see now we're still at level, or sorry, the last level is 4 and the count for the faces is 400,000. If I divide this one more time the count is 1.6 one million point six. And the mesh now will be a little bit heavy and you'll see the graphic card is not displaying properly. So you want to be to be aware of that. I'm just gonna add one more layer and we're gonna call it bump. So now uh, I'm gonna do a different technique here which is using the stamp brush and I'm gonna go find one of the presets which is this one here. So you can see there, the stamp brush will pretty much add or subtract from your geometry depending on the look of the brush itself. So I can just increase this, the brush size, holding the control, and just, just adding little skin, little definitions of skin and just to do it randomly going all over the body and you can see how quickly you can just add and of course at the end you can adjust the visibility or the uh, transparency of that level after you're done so I'm just gonna keep doing that and I will see you guys when I'm done I'd like to add more details here however uh, my computer started to struggle with all these uh, information so what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna go down in the level let's just go down in the proper here go to the first level now we're at back at level one I'd like to add more details here towards the mouth area however the idea is now is I want to subdivide this area locally. I want to work on this particular mouth without having to load the entire mesh and that of course that will go heavy on your memory. So I'm just gonna go to the first level or level one and this time I'm gonna go to the selection tool I wanna go to faces. I just wanna select few faces on my mesh just gonna add the uh, symmetry here and you just brush away if you feel that you uh, selected a, an area that you don't want just hit the control button to deselect so we're just giving him a lipstick here let me create a new layer and once we start subdividing selection it will go up in the hierarchy and it will remember what we've done previously so it's a very good uh, feature that uh, allows you to remember actually it allows the software to remember what we have done already so it, it's not building from scratch you're just adding or actually you're just working on this particular area without having to load the entire mesh or the entire head or the neck or the whole body in memory while you work in this specific area so it will go very fast, you can work on it very fast and very interactively. Alright, just let's zoom in. 
and I'm gonna in my image browser and I have this image I'm gonna use as a stencil right I'm just gonna add details here the same way that we've done before once I'm done with my detail I'm gonna go down all the way down to level 1 I'm gonna go up again in the levels just the same way we've done before page up and you'll see it it's holding the details we've done before on the mouth so that is a very good feature in Modbox that you can local subdivide work your way up divide do your details come down again and then bring your mesh all the way up to the, the proper level which is level 5 in this case once we're done with that time to save and just add a little more detail we're pretty much done in the detailing phase uh, the only thing extra I've done is added a new layer and just give this creature a scar on his uh, forehead just to break up the symmetry and also just give him a little something different what I'll do right now is uh, I'll try to mimic the Maya render or in other words I will try to see how would this object look like when it's rendered in Maya the reason to do that is I want a reference image to compare it to when I take it to Maya and render it with a mentor ray so I can compare the uh, image from Mudbox to the final result and see what I can do to tweak it to get it closer as much as possible so the first thing I'll do is to change the background color I'll get rid of the gradient color and I'll also go to the preferences for the background you see under colors the flat viewport and I will make that black and also I don't want to see the grid, I don't want it to distract me I'm going to go back quickly to the uh, object cluster and since I want to have a nice flat I don't want any perspective in it, I just want it from the side so I'm just going to click on the side right click and choose look through so now we're looking through the side view same rules will apply for the dolly and zoom You can also type in the number here. I will add a new light just by adding create light. Once you add that light, you'll see it will change the light intensity very fast. So you can also rename it. I want this to be the back. To move the light around you just press the L button and lift sorry the L key on the keyboard and left mouse button and you'll see it's moving around however there is a little limitation uh, in Modbox at the moment that the camera is actually the light is linked to the camera so if I want this light to be in the back of the object you can change that in the transformation node and let's see this is about uh, 0.96 and the Z I'm just gonna make it minus 0.96 and now it's in the back of the light actually that uh, cool trick I learned from uh, Modbox uh, forum so I would recommend everybody to go there it has lots of good tips and tricks here and there and uh, thankful to LD he's the one who pointed out to me so go there check it out one last thing I'm gonna do I'm just gonna assign a new material and I just want it to be gray just to simulate Maya default shader and I just want to reduce the specularity of it a little bit my uh, machine is kind of struggling with the high density of the object I'm going to take a screen capture and save my file